Yo, what is up? Tom John Swan here. I'm in Boston at the Encore, and uh, we're right in Boston Harbor. It's actually on the other side of the hotel. This is my view with the great uh, rooftop of the convention center and, you know, the old warehouses and parking lots and stuff like that. And they're also washing the windows today, so you're going to see these ropes floating back and forth behind me. But I wanted to shoot this video real quick and say, um, you know, the power, just talk about the power of going to events uh, that mastermind events. I'm here for, it's actually called the Avengers Mastermind. It's a group of entrepreneurs. Uh, just about everyone in this room is making a minimum of seven figures uh, upwards of some guys are making eight, nine, ten figures in this room. So it's the power of getting in the room with other people that are like-minded and who are going to get, help you get to the next level. So what we're going to be doing is it, it's, it's a lot of networking, uh, but you can really learn. Everyone brings a different facet of the business to the table. So there's people who are doing wholesaling. Uh, we're, it, it's, it's called the Avengers because it's run by Dan Fleischman, and uh, it's Dan Fleischman, Joel Marion, Cody Sperber, uh, Cole Hatter. So Dan Fleischman has a obsession with superheroes. So he wanted to bring together the top minds in the real estate game. And uh, so he called it the Avengers Mastermind. Um, it's a really cool group. It's super. Everyone is here to help each other. And that's the biggest thing. I find, and, and I used to fall to this mindset that years ago, I used to think that because people were on a higher level than me, that they didn't want to talk to me. And it's actually precisely the opposite because as I grow and as I get around people who have been there, I've learned that ultimately I want to be in the same room as these people. And I want to be in the same room as people who are on a higher level and have done what I want to do because I'm going to learn from them. And by joining these masterminds and by getting into the same room, you can actually learn uh, shortcuts. It's, it's kind of like a fast track. See, there's a, there's a negative connotation around masterminds that are like, Oh, they're overpriced, but really like you're paying for friends and you're paying for a shortcut. And ultimately if I want to get to a certain goal, then I want to become friends with that pe those people and I want to get in the same room with them. And ultimately you got to pay to do that. So every time I've joined a mastermind or worked with a mentor though, my income has exponentially increased. And that's what happens. That's what the power of these masterminds is. So you, you basically learn the exact tips and tricks rather than going and trying to figure it out on your own, trying to take all the uh, failing forward, you know, whatever you want to call it, like the, the imperfect action. I mean, you're still going to do that, but you're going to have guidance along the way. So I know that I can come into this room and after this weekend, walk out of here with a completely new mindset. I've been to three mastermind events in the last six weeks. This is going to be the fourth. And every weekend I've come out and had ideas and action steps that I know I need to take that are going to get me to an extreme next level. It's not just like a little step forward. It's like, I know that I can 10 X my income in the next 90 days based on what I learn in these events and be being connected with people who are doing this. So I know that I can actually, you know, walk out of here and, 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 have a game plan and I can connect with new people and, and have these connections to get me to the next level because it's all about who you know. It's not about how to go about it. So, you know, there's a book called Who Not How. I definitely recommend you go read it because that will completely change your perspective. Um, one thing that came out of these masterminds, uh, one, one thing that came out of the event in Vegas called Clever Summit was one of the things that I learned at Clever Summit was that you need to 
Be ultimately, everyone should become an entrepreneur. You need to become an entrepreneur regardless of who you are, where you, where you are in life, what you need, what you know, what you have to offer. If you don't think you do, start reading books because I guarantee every single person, anyone that's watching this, if you're watching this, ignore these ropes. If you're watching this, know that there's something that you offer that you're just not giving yourself credit for. So you have some expertise, you have some form of knowledge in some area of life, like it doesn't matter what it is, right? It could be video games, it could be any, I mean, anything, right? Like if you feel like you haven't achieved anything in life, you, you may just be discounting yourself because you have something to offer on some level. You have some wealth of knowledge about some subject that will get you very far. Like if you can learn how to monetize that, turn it into a education product. You can teach other people how to do what you know or how to, how to know what you know, right? You can teach other people what you know and you can ultimately, you, you can ultimately monetize that and turn it into a business. And if not, fall back on real estate. Like you can always get into real estate. The best time is now. Tomorrow, the best time will be tomorrow. So it's always now is the best time. And especially we have a, a crash looming at some point in the next anywhere from three months to two years, three years, four years, who knows, but there's a crash looming. So you want to be able to withstand through that crash and you want to own real estate that's going to be the the best way to build cash flow it's going to be the best way to uh secure secure your assets because you're going to while well, well, a crash may happen and you're going to have you know there's going to be a, there's going to be a pullback in the market over time historically 15 to 30 years the long term gain game the long term gain real estate always goes up so you will protect your investment by being in this long term game um Ultimately, though, you need to be an entrepreneur and it doesn't matter if you know how to. It doesn't matter what you know, what you know, what you think, you know, what you think you don't know. It really doesn't matter. Just become start up a business like you can start up your name, LLC. Go get incorporated, build a business the right way. And I'll shoot another video on how to do that. Um, find uh, find prime corporate service. They can help you get set up the right way. I have a link I can send you to get them set up. Follow Tommy Thornburg our, and, and Prime Corporate Service on uh, Instagram. And they can help you get set up because ultimately, like, you need a holding company. You need a, uh, you need a company to house your LLC rather than, if you're not structured the right way, and I'm going to shoot other videos that I, that I talk more about this, but this is just kind of a candid ramble video. I'm, I'm just hitting a bunch of different topics in one shot here. Um, but ultimately you want to, you want to, you want to own an LLC, but you want to have a holding company to one for anonymity, especially if you're selling a product or anything like that, a service, a, uh, education product, you want to make sure that you're structured the right way. So you, you need to have a holding company and you need to have, so you have a holding company and then that's going to branch down and you're going to have an LLC. And then when you have that, you can build other LLCs off of it. But also if you want to partner with somebody, you have a holding company, they have a holding company, and those essentially act like the parents. And then you form a joint holding company, which you can then branch other LLCs off of. So what I do is when I partner with somebody, I have a joint holding company. And then if we want to buy a property, we have a uh, ownership LLC. And then if we want to do Airbnb or short-term rental, we have a management LLC. So we can branch off separate LLCs off of each holding company, but the holding company is a non is, is an anonymity structure. So it protects our assets 
so that if we do get sued, then we're not, ultimately they can only sue the assets of that LLC. And if we buy multiple properties, we'll make an individual LLC for each property. So that way, again, if we get sued, all they can go after is the assets of that one property and they can't go after all of our other properties. So same thing with products. If you're doing uh, an education product or if you're doing a, um, you know, a service, a, a web service, or you're doing an uh, Amazon store or an, a fulfilled by Amazon, whatever, you want to make sure that you're structured properly. And when you're structured properly, then you build yourself for success because ultimately you're protecting yourself and a huge part of success and what successful people do is they structure um, they structure their companies so that they are protected because you want to always protect, protect, protect because that's going to save you. You're, you're not going to get rich from the money you gain. You're going to get rich from the money that you don't lose, right? So it, when, you're, when you're structured the right way, the more you can the more you can protect yourself from loss, the more that you're going to get build wealth, you're going to gain those assets, um, and you're going to be able to build that structure underneath. So that being said, back to being an entrepreneur, you want to, you, you have an obligation to become an entrepreneur, and here's why. There's so much money in the world that you can do so much good with it. It's not about how much money you make, it's about what you do with it. So what we have really focused on is Cole Hatter has a event called Thrive and a company called Thrive that he puts on and the, and the tagline of it is make money matter. So ultimately, what this group of entrepreneurs does and what many, many entrepreneurs do is, you know, there's only so much money that you can actually do stuff with. You know, there's only so many jets you can get. There's only so many nice houses you can get until it doesn't really matter anymore, right? And it's not about the things, although those are nice, but it's not about the things that you have. It's about what you do with it and who you can help. And you haven't really succeeded until you can help other people and, in my mind, like that's why I'm trying to educate so many people on short-term rental because that's my bread and butter. That's where I make my money. And I want other people to do that as well. Like there's so much opportunity out there. So a couple of weeks ago, I Googled just for fun. I Googled how much money is in the world and Google, I don't, I don't know the validity to this, but I was just curious, like if you combine all of your, all of your currencies, all the assets in the world, what does that look like? What's that number? And Google says that there is approximately five quadrillion dollars in the world. So think about this. So that's five and I believe it's 15 zeros afterwards. So five quadrillion dollars, okay? Everyone thinks about becoming a millionaire or becoming a billionaire and you're thinking from the ground up. So when you're at, you know, making 50,000 or a hundred thousand dollars a year and you're thinking about making a million, that seems like a tall task because it's, you know, 10 times or 20 times what you're making. It's like, how do I do that? So how do these people do this? But the thing is when you think about it and reverse engineer it, so think about it from rather than from the bottom up, think about it from the top down, right? So if you think about five quadrillion dollars, one millionth of 1% of five quadrillion dollars is $5 billion. So to me, I'm like, well, I can get one millionth of 1% of anything. It's not, it's, it, that doesn't seem that hard, right? So it's just reverse engineering how to do that. And ultimately you're gonna hear as you, like if you're going down the entrepreneur journey, which I highly encourage everybody to do this, but if you're going down this path, you want to think about this. Reverse engineer everything. Start with the end in mind. 
find your goal. Like, don't don't think about your goals in a staircase format, right? Like, so so what I hear a lot of people do is they say, okay, I want to have ten short term rentals, and then I want to have, you know, then I want to have a wholesale business where I'm wholesaling a hundred houses a year, and then I want to do ten fix and flips a year. No. What's your end goal? What's the top of the staircase look like? What are you going to be doing at that level? And when you figure that out, so for me, my end goal is triple net leases, which is commercial properties and uh, large, large apartment, commercial apartment buildings. So you're talking about 100, 200, you know, 500 units in a complex, you know, large apartment complexes. And so when you start thinking on a big macro level, then all of a sudden, you know, why go for a property that is getting, that's going to net a thousand or $2,000 a month when you can go for a property that's going to net a hundred thousand or $200,000 a month. And when you go to that level, like start playing in the big leagues and, and immediately the mindset becomes, well, how do I do that? I, I'm not ready for that. I don't know how to do that. I don't know where to go. So I'll tell you a, a quote that stuck with me for a long, long time. And this is from Zig Ziglar. And Zig Ziglar said, one of the keys to success is being a good finder. So go out and be curious, George. Go find the answer because there are ways, and especially on a bigger level, it's actually much easier to play in that game at a high level than it is to play in the small game. The banks are more willing to work with you because on commercial levels, they they actually look at the cash flow of the asset rather than your personal financial structure. So even if you don't have money, it doesn't matter because you can get into this as long as it's cash flowing. If you get into a property that is immediately cash flowing, you need zero money in the bank to go and get that asset. Also, it pays to partner with people who are actually doing this. So the, the way to do it here, I'll give you a big secret. The way to do it is go find the product, the property, go find the asset, bring it to somebody who has experience in the game and ask to partner with them. Say, Hey, I have a deal. Let's partner on this. Get your structures, right? Form a, form a joint holding company and then go partner with them and boom, like you sign a deal and you know, I'm willing to give up 50% of $50,000 a month. I'll make $25,000 a month for doing very little, just finding a deal, being a connector and bringing it to somebody who knows what they're doing, knows how to get the deal done. And then from there, everything's under management. It's all automated. One thing, you know, People have argued with me that you can't be a millionaire and not be involved with your business. And that is entirely false. If you outsource everything, all you have to do is oversee a management company, which takes about 10 minutes a week or a month, depending on how they're structured. And then literally you can do whatever you want and the money rolls in. And that's how ultimately rich people get richer and richer and richer. They find cash flowing assets that automate and then duplicate the process over and over and over again. So you have a duty to become an entrepreneur and get into any game that you see valuable because ultimately the more money that you make, the more difference you can make in the world. The more money that I make, I can continually offer people more jobs. I can create jobs around the world. I can create jobs in domestically in America, I can create jobs overseas with my virtual assistants. And then I can continue to build businesses. And then what I can do is I can take that money and I can actually go and donate it. And I can go make a difference in other people's lives. So you can't tell me that money can't buy happiness because not only can I get the things that I want in life, which why not, right? We only get one life. It's you don't, it's not a dress rehearsal. You don't have another shot to do this. So fuck what everyone else says, go do what you want to do. If you want a really fancy car, find a way to get it. If you want a really nice house, go find a way to get it. 
If you want to live in a cabin in the woods in Alaska, find a way to get it and get there. And you can you can do that with automated cash flow. So like stop playing small, stop stop dreaming and go make your dreams happen. Like you're not going to get another opportunity to do this. And the older that you get, the less time that you have. I'm not going to say it's harder to do because I don't believe it's hard to do at all. But the less time that you have to get these things done. So just make, just take action steps. Stop playing small ball. Stop the stuff that's not making you money or moving you towards your goals. If that means cutting people out of your life that are, if you're surrounding yourself with people who are not thinking the way that you want to think that are that are not moving you towards your goals then stop spending time with them if you surround yourself with five people who are making you know fifty thousand dollars a year and want to go spend their money on beer and video games and just go sit on the couch and watch netflix then you're going to be the six because ultimately you're going to be spending your time doing what they're doing but if you want to spend your time with people making a hundred million dollars and you surround yourself with five people who are making a hundred million dollars, even if you surround yourself with five people making a million dollars and you want to become a millionaire, surround yourself with the people who are doing what you want to do. And when you do that, if you surround yourself with five millionaires, you're going to become the sixth. If you surround yourself with five billionaires, you're going to find a way to become the sixth because you're going to start learning a whole lot and you're going to start gaining all these tactics and steps. And I'll tell you, they're not freaking hard. It's just taking action. It's doing things that are uncomfortable, that you're not familiar with doing, and you're not used to doing these things in your life. But it's so much better than the alternative, right? Like, reading is one of them. Go follow Alex Hormozy at Hormozy on Instagram. Dude's a genius. Surround yourself with people who are doing what you want to do. Follow what I'm doing. Go follow Hormozy. The people I follow the most are Hormozy, Brad Lee, Pace Morby, uh, Cole Hatter, Cody Sperber. All these guys, I not only get in these events with them, but I'm also like constantly consuming their content. And when I, like literally my social media feeds are all entrepreneurs. They're all people who are doing what I want to do. So I'm not following politics. I'm not following people who are going and doing bullshit like that doesn't impact me. I'm literally learning every minute of every day some way. And, and the more content that I consume of these people, the more I'm going to gain these little nuggets that I can implement. And the, the, the key is implementation. It's just taking action and going and doing the things that you need to do now that might be uncomfortable that you might not want to do. Like I don't love shooting vi videos, although you're gonna see my social blow up because I have to shoot content because I need to get my message out there. I don't love shooting videos, but I do love talking to people and I do love helping people. So it's all mindset. It's all framing the way that that I can communicate, right? So it, it in my mind, I'm obligated to do this because I need to get this message out there. I need to talk to you and tell you what I know, and I need to get you on the same mindset so that I can help you to get to the next level. And if I don't do that, then I'm doing you a disservice. I'm doing a disservice to everyone that I can help because otherwise I'm not helping them. So that's why you're obligated to become an entrepreneur. If, if you know, you don't agree with that, then you're going to play small ball and you're not going to help the world, right? Like if you truly have a passion for helping people, then go do the uncomfortable things and start helping people. As soon as I opened up, I had all this information bottled inside. And as soon as I started opening up and just telling people what I know and, and helping people and motivating people and talking to people about, you know, what I know, helping with with quotes i live by quotes you know helping people with quotes helping people with um you know just just framing their mind like like so much of success and 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 financial success is mindset it is all mindset it's 
cliche, people argue it and they say, oh, there's more to it. It's really not because once you change your mindset and once you reframe, all your whole perspective changes. And once your perspective changes, then you have the ability to see things in a different light. So like I have these conversations. I went out with a couple last night here in Boston and we went around downtown and just casually talked with multiple people. And as we left the, the different places that we were at, you know, we went to dinner, we went to a couple bars and just, you know, we're having drinks, just talking uh, all about real estate, all about entrepreneurship, all about what, you know, our goals in life and how we're going to get there and what businesses we can build to get there. There's literally an entire night and we're still having fun. We're still, you know, it, it doesn't have to all be, you know, business and serious. Like it, it, we, one thing you'll learn in this game is entrepreneurs love to have fun. And, and the more money that you have and the more that you don't have that pressure of, you know, going out, can I afford to have a night out on the town? It, it, we don't care. It's fun. Like I, I made more money. I made 10 times, you know, the amount of money that I needed for this weekend in like one day yesterday. So it, like we have fun, but anyways, I, going out and with like talking to other people at the bar or at like uh, at, a, at a brewery or wherever we were, you can see the entire mindset difference. And going there and going, um, you know, going to different places. But then when we left, we'd, we'd, we'd always kind of recalibrate and we'd say, man, it's such a difference in mentality. And you can literally see it in in the conversations that we're having with other people. So anyways, all that to say, you only get one life. You're obligated to become an entrepreneur. You're obligated to make as much money as possible. If you were looking for somebody to give you permission, I'm giving it to you. Go out and do what you want to do. Go tell the world what you know. Go tell the world what you have to offer. Don't be afraid, don't be shy. Because the thing is, is like I started to say before, the thing is, once I opened up and started talking to people about what I know and started just being available and like dropping my knowledge on the world, everything that I feared would happen, it was completely the opposite. You know, you fear like rejection or you fear people not getting on board with it and shooting it down and arguing with you or telling you you're crazy, which many people have told me I'm crazy and now... Many people told me for years I was crazy. I, I thought, you know, I thought too crazy. I don't, I need to be realistic. I need to be all this shit. It's not true. I never listened to it. I never let people hold me down. Even when people told me that, I constantly, constantly questioned it. And because I conscien, because I, uh, because I consciously, questioned every time somebody said that. And I was like, I don't believe that. If there's a guy named Bill Gates or, you know, Mark Zuckerberg or Alex Hormozzi, all these guys, whoever, there's millions of them. All these guys were able to do it. Why can't I? They're not geniuses. They're not, I mean, it may be in some cases, right? Like figuring out how to build a computer is pretty, pretty badass, but like, you don't, I, I don't ever want to be the smartest guy in the room. Like I, I don't go into rooms where I want to be, where I'm the smartest guy in the room. I always want to be, I actually prefer to be the dumbest guy in the room. I prefer to be the smallest guy in the room because that means I have room to grow and it keeps me motivated and it keeps me driven to get to that next level. Because when I see guys, you know, Making seven figures is a big deal, but then you get in a room with guys making hundreds of millions of dollars and it, you feel like a tiny fish in a giant pond. And I'm like, man, I got so much room to grow and I got so much room to go to get to that level. And I'll tell you the difference, the gap between zero to a, to one million is significantly larger than going from one million to a hundred million. 
And that may sound crazy, but I promise you, it. once you get to that level, you can see the pieces, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, you can see the top, whatever, the, whatever you wanna call it, the top of the staircase. And what I do is I, I see the top of the staircase and I work myself my way backwards. And this is, I started saying this earlier, find your end goal, right? Find that end goal and learn what you need to do to get there. Don't start from the bottom up because if you're not focused, if you're saying one day I'm gonna get to apartment buildings, well, no, go do it now, right? Go, go, go get in that space and then work backwards from there. Go learn how to get to that level and then work your way backwards. What are the steps that I need to do? Okay, I need to find property. I need to find a lender. I need to find somebody that I can partner with who has experience in this field. And from there, boom, now I can get into that space and I can exponentially increase my income by just getting into that, getting into that realm with these people. I also have separate businesses outside of real estate that, uh, uh, what's, I have separate businesses outside of real estate that complement the real estate business. There's services that are needed in the real estate business, such as virtual assistants, right? So I'm gonna be launching a virtual assistant company. Uh, specifically geared for short-term rental. I still believe in short-term rental. I still believe there's a ton of opportunity there, but I'm shifting my goals. I'm shifting my direction on where I'm headed with short-term rental because while it is an end game, it's not the end game. It's not the end goal. My goal with short-term rental ultimately is going to be to pick up high six and seven figure properties and then move those into short-term rental as opposed to the smaller properties that I'm playing with right now. The smaller properties help me get to where I'm at now and help me get the cash flow that I need, but they're ultimately not the end goal. So all this to say, hopefully you found something in this video, you find something, uh, some nugget that's going to help you, but ultimately go be an entrepreneur, go make some money, Make some real money. Don't waste your time. We have an obligation. And I'll tell you, in the last six weeks, I've been to Vegas, Miami, Boston. Uh, I'm going to Raleigh, North Carolina in two weeks to go to a book deal, uh, a book launch with Ed Milet. And if you're not following him, definitely go follow him. Go follow Grant Cardone. Go follow Brad Lee. Go follow uh, Damon John, Jordan Belfort. Um, you know, and, and, if, and if you're hearing these names and you're like, ah, that guy's an asshole, I don't want to follow him, shut up and go follow him and listen to what they're saying. Put your ego down and go listen to what these people are saying because they are doing something that you want to do and they're in a space. So put your ego aside. Who cares if you don't like them? They're going to teach you something. It's just like for me, I love music. I won't ever say there's a bad band. Like there are bands that I really don't like. There are musicians that I really don't like, but, and I really don't care for their music, but you know what? They're putting themselves out there. They're doing something. They're taking action. And you know what? Every musician out there has at least one good song. Like they have one song that you're like, even if you hate them to death, you're like, but that one song is actually pretty good. And like, I'll actually listen to that if it comes on the radio. Or, you know, I might actually play it on a playlist, even though I really don't like them. I may actually just play this one song because that's a really good one. Same thing with entrepreneurs. Like, you're not gonna vibe with everybody, but you know what? You're gonna find some people that you do vibe with because they're associated with people that you don't necessarily care for. And you're only gonna find them by following these people. So you may find somebody randomly that you've never heard of that all of a sudden changes your life and it's because you followed somebody that you didn't really care for and they mention them or they're on a podcast or they're wherever go take action just start learning start just just don't be an endless consumer either just when you learn something the best thing you can do is take action the best form of flattery for me is when like the, the time that i feel the most gratitude the most 
accomplished is when somebody else takes my advice and goes and takes action and sees success with it. They, they get the results that I've gotten with it and they're learning and taking action. And like, it's the most rewarding feeling. And I hope to help more and more and more people do this. So bottom line, I'm going to shut up now, go take action Do the things you got to do, learn the things you got to learn, live your life, live life to the fullest, and don't be afraid. Like, take risks. It, it, you know, a battleship is safe in harbor, but that's not what a battleship is built for. It's built to go out to battle. So stop hanging out in the harbor and get out in the ocean and start facing the waves, start facing the competition start facing the challenges and just get out there and do it and go make some money. And you will find it is so much easier than you build it up to do, to be in your head. And ultimately success will come so much faster than, than you ever thought possible. So I love you. I hope all the best. You can feel free to reach out to me. If you're seeing this, you're probably on one of my channels. Um, follow what I'm doing, follow me, feel free to message me. I will always try to get back to everyone. Uh, as my following grows, it is becoming harder and harder to respond to people regularly. But if, uh, if you reach out to me, I'll do my best to get back to you. And um, just get out and take action. If you ever wanna have a conversation and, and learn about, you know, try to find what uh, trying to find your path, shoot me a message and I can give you some ideas. And, and, and if I can't take the time, I can give you some resources to go find your way. So I love you. I wish you great success. I'll see you at the top. Peace.